Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Islamic obligatory acts of worship, goals, and objectives. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his ever glorious book, People, worship your Lord who created you and those before you, so that you may be mindful of him. I bear witness. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path to the Day of Judgment. There is no doubt that the obligatory acts of worship in Islam, initial sublime values and lofty morals. Because Islam has linked all these add to sublime morals, our Prophet ﷺ stated that the higher objective of his mission is to complete the virtuous morals as he said. I was sent to uphold and complement ethical values. There is no single act of worship enacted by Islam except it has an effect on elevating the moral behavior of individual in case it's performed in its due manner. This effect transcends the individual to the community and has a great impact on it. Prayer, for example, the glorious Quran states that its end is to instill virtuous, correct behaviors and purify soul as the Allah, Allah the Almighty says, keep up the prayer. Prayer restrains outrageous and unacceptable behavior. The divine revelation explains that establishing prayer in their due time has a great impact in boosting timelines. As the Almighty Allah says, verily, the prayer is enjoined on the believers at fixed hours. Moreover, the Honorable Sharia has promised those who do not realize the essence of prayers and withhold goodness from people with grave torment, as he glory be to him said, O unto those performers of prayer who delay their prayers from their stated fixed times. Those who do good deeds only to be seen and refuse common kindness. As for zakat, one of the great purposes is to underline the values of solidarity, being merciful to one another and purifying soul from greedness and bad traits. As he glory be to him says, take sadaqah alms from their wealth in order to purify them and invoke Allah for them. Verily, your invocations are a source of security for them, and Allah, all here, all nowhere. Islam warned the one who pays zakah or charity against being shown off and reminding others of your generosity, and consider these ill traits reason for invalidating the acts of worship, as he glory be to him, said, all you who believe, do not render in vain your sadaqa, charity, by reminders of your generosity or by injury like him who spent his wealth to be seen of men. And he does not believe in Allah nor in the last day. His likeness is a likeness of a smooth rock on which a little is a little dust. On it falls a heavy rain which leaves it bare. They are not able to do anything with what they have earned, and Allah does not guide the disbelieving people. The main objective of fasting is to achieve taqwa, piety, and to be watchful toward Allah in both secrecy and in public. As the Almighty Allah says, all you who believe, observing fasting is prescribed for you, as it was prescribed for those before you, that you may be you may become mindful of Allah. In addition, it helps one to always observe patience and lofty morals. As the Prophet ﷺ says, Fasting is a protection for you. So when you are fasting, do not behave foolishly. And if anyone argue with you or abuses you, says, say, I'm fasting. I am fasting. The one who does not know the real meaning of fasting and does not achieve its real objective, then he will not have a reward for fasting 
as our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if any, if one does not like estualize and false conduct, conduct Allah has no need that he should abstain from his food and his drink. And he, peace be upon him, says, a fasting person may receive nothing from his fasting except hunger and thirst. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions and followers. There is no doubt that Hajj instilled good virtues and lofty morals in souls. Hajj does not bring about its fruit and is not considered accepted in a way that the one who perform it gets all his sin forgiven, except when one abstained from sexual intercourse with one's wife, committing sins and disputing unjustly during the Hajj, as the Almighty Allah says, the Hajj pilgrimage is in a well-known lunar year months, so whosoever intends to perform Hajj therein by assuming Ihram, then he shouldn't have a sexual relation with his wife, nor commit sin, nor dispute unjustly during the Hajj, and whatever good you do, be sure that Allah knows it, and take a provision with you for the journey, but the best provision is taqwa, piety, righteousness, etc. So fear me, O men of understanding. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, whoever performs Hajj pilgrimage and does not have a sexual relations with his wife, nor commits sin, nor disputes unjustly during Hajj, then he returns from Hajj as a pure and free from sins, as on the day on which his mother gave, gave birth to him. We underline that the fact that Islam is not considered with practices that have no purposes or not related to reality, when these acts of worship are not related to their, their purposes, the one would perform prayers and also cheat, monopolies, hurt one neighbor, betray or does not fulfill one's promise. Likewise, one would perform Hajj, but when he returned, he would return again to his previous state of negligence and non-observance of acts of worship. Our Prophet ﷺ tells us about the real bankrupt in the Day of Judgment, saying, Do you know who is a bankrupt? They said, the bankrupt among us is the one who has neither money with him nor any property. He said, the real bankrupt of my ummah would be he, would, he who would come on the day of resurrection with salah, psalm, fasting, and salah, charity, but he will find himself bankrupt on that day as he will have exhausted the good deeds because he reviled others, brought calumny against others, unlawfully devoured the wealth of others, shed blood of others, and beat others. So th his good deeds would be credited to the account of those who suffered at his hand. If his good deeds fall short to clear the account, their sin would be entered in his account and he would be thrown in hell fire. In another occasion, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was told about a woman who is very famous for her prayer fasting and many charities, but she is rude to her neighbors. He وسلم, said, she will go to hellfire. He, peace be upon him, was told about another woman who does not do much of the superobligatory prayers or fasting and gives little charity, but does not harm her neighbor and she was kind to them. The Prophet said, she will go to paradise. O oh Allah, guide us to the best morals as none can guide us to them except you. O oh Allah, protect our country Egypt and all other countries of the world. Thank you.